Welcome to part four in the module that provides a discussion of patterns and frameworks for service access and communication. In previous parts of this module, we first talked about some of the limitations and accidental complexities with the C socket API. We then described ways in which the wrapper facade pattern can help to alleviate a number of these limitations and complexities. We then talked about the ACE socket wrapper facades written in C++ to provide cleaner access to the underlying socket mechanisms. And now we're going to provide an example that illustrates how to apply these wrapper facades to a simple iterative web client and server application. Here's an overview of what we're going to be doing here. We're going to implement a web server and a web client, very simple, using iterative mechanisms, so one client connection at a time. And we'll start out by creating an ACE SOC acceptor, which plays the passive role, and it waits for clients to connect to it. Uh, we'll then create an ACE SOC connector, which plays the active role, and that initiates a connection. And it'll go ahead and initiate the connection to the server and create an ACE SOC stream when the connection is complete. Likewise, the ACE SOC acceptor will be used to accept an incoming connection from the client and create an initialized ACE SOC stream. And both these, when these both uh, ACE SOC streams have been created and initialized, we then go ahead and have them communicate back and forth, sending and receiving data in accordance with the HTTP protocol. And they play the, the communication role. So those are the key roles that we're going to be describing. So here's an illustration of how we can use the ASOC connector for a web client. What we're going to do first is we're going to write a simple main application in the C++ program, and we'll process various command line arguments that indicate uh, what port number and what server address, what content we want to be able to get, and so on. In this particular case, we're going to be defaulting to port 80, because that's the typical port number for a socket. But it would be easy to, for a web server, it would be easy to extend that to make it work on different ports. Uh, we're then going to go ahead and instantiate the SOC connector and the SOC stream. And notice how we use traits here to make this easy to program without having to keep track of all those details. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and initiate a timed connection, which will try for up to 10 seconds to get connected to the server. And if for some reason it can't get connected, it'll go ahead and fail. Assuming it works, what we then do is write a little code to set up how to send a GET request to the server. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use an IOVEC, which is a data structure that's used for gather, write, scatter, read operations, to do these things efficiently. And we set up the, the GET request part of the message. We pass in the path name, and then we pass in kind of the, the trailer part of the HTTP GET request header. And when all those things are put into the IOVEC, we then go ahead and make a send VN call, which sends this vector and will block until the send is complete. Uh, this is going to perform a blocking send. We don't have to do a blocking send here. We could do a time send, but just to show you how easy it is to do a blocking send. What we're then going to do is we're going to go into a loop waiting for the results to come back from the server. In this particular case, just to show you the diversity of approaches, we're going to implement this using timed receives. And so we'll receive the data coming back, and we'll do something to it. In this case, we're just going to write it to standard output. But of course, you could buffer it up, put it someplace else. So that illustrates the client side. Now let's take a look at the server side. This is going to illustrate the use of ASOC acceptor and ASOC stream to accept a connection and then send and receive the data to and from the client. Uh, once again, we start out by initializing some of the key objects. We initialize our server address for our web server to be port 80. We go ahead and create our acceptor. And then we turn around and we say, uh, while we're going to loop forever, accept the next connection from a client. And assuming that this works properly, what we get back from that is a connected ACE SOC stream. And then we turn around and we memory map the path name that we extract out of that stream by using a function called getPathName that we're not going to talk about here in much detail. But you can imagine it would go through and find the, the various path name information from the stream. We memory map that, take the pointer that comes back from the memory mapping operation, and then we do a transfer to send all n bytes back to the client. In this particular case, we're doing a blocking send, but it would be easy to make this a non-blocking send if we were concerned about flow control or some other kind of malicious activity on the part of clients jamming up the connection and preventing the send from completing. 
So this particular simple example illustrates how to build a very uh, lightweight, iterative web client and server. Uh, it alleviates a number of the problems we discussed before with the use of sockets, so it's less error prone. Uh, as you can see, the, the original C-level socket code would not be able to detect the errors we see here by running it through the compiler. In this case, we're reading from an accept or listen mode socket. We're trying to accept on a, on a data mode socket, which are not correct things to do. In contrast, you simply can't do that with the ACE wrapper facades. You can't do reads on an acceptor. The operation isn't supported. You can't try to uh, accept on a stream. The operation isn't supported. So these kinds of silly mistakes are caught early on in the life cycle. Uh, the other problem we talked about with sockets is it's very complex. You have to know a lot about the design. It's not clear from looking at the interfaces what things do what roles. In contrast with the wrapper facades, the surface area is done for the design in a way where it's fairly straightforward to tell by looking at the names of the classes, what role they play, whether they're acceptors or connectors, which are connection roles, active and passive, whether they're data transfer operations and classes like streams, whether they're local domain, local sockets versus internet domain, TCP IP sockets, and so on and so forth. Those things are, are baked into the design, so it's easy to tell what's going on. Other issues we talked about with respect to portability and non-uniformity, these issues are also cleaned up. And so as a result, much easier to write portable applications, much easier to write applications that you can tune and optimize without having to give up the platform independent nature of a lot of code you might be trying to write. Naturally, however, we need more than just wrapper facades in order to develop effective web servers. So these portability issues are nice, but as we go on to the next modules in this section, we'll see that there's lots more space to explore. We have to be able to come up with more effective ways to add concurrency. We also have to be able to add other capabilities that will make it possible to, to be able to dynamically configure the systems out of building block parts and be able to apply much more sophisticated I.O. mechanisms we might have on certain platforms. And so we'll talk about that as we go further.